It's a mammoth Halloween challenge. We are headed all over Central Florida to hit the top three Halloween events this season. We're going to Bush Gardens, Hallow Scream, Universal's Halloween Horror Nights, and Disney's Not So Scary Halloween Party to find the best in frightful fun. Let's boo this. Tonight we are at Bush Gardens, Tampa for Hallow Scream. Neither of us have been to this event before. I don't think either of us have even been to this park before. No, nope. we oh. suck on meat right for the slaughter. We are not at Disney World, but. We said we wanted to go to other places besides Disney and Universal, so here we are. Yeah. I have heard this is scarier than Halloween Horror Nights. Yep. <laughs> so... <sighs> How are you feeling? I feel great. There's five houses, there's a bunch of scare zones, there are clowns on rides, snacks, shows. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Bush Gardens Hallow Scream kicked off September 9th and runs through Halloween on select nights. The event starts at 7 p.m. and runs to either midnight or 1 a.m. depending on which night of the week you visit. But with your ticket, you can get in starting at 5 p.m. This is a separately ticketed event, and we got our tickets through Undercover Tourist because you can grab them at a little bit of a discount. They start around $40 a night. Um, however, they were about $60 the night we came because it's a Saturday in peak season. However, that is still the least expensive by far of any of the tickets of the events we're going to. And because we're coming on a busy Saturday night, we decided to splurge for the front of Fear Pass once we got here. It was $129 tonight, but it starts at $69. Much like the Express Pass over at Universal, it allows you front of the liner through an expedited queue at the haunted houses. So, are you ready? No, but yeah. I'm so excited and nervous at the same time. I hear there's drinks that are in a blood bag. Okay, well, I'm a little bit more excited now. Right? Here we go. We're headed into our first haunted house, yeah. The Forgotten. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you excited? So much. Alan, tell the people what The Forgotten's about. Okay. Victims will be drawn into a hidden world beyond the rubble and rocks of an unsuspecting quarry, where dark secrets lurk in the shadows. Will those who enter return to the world of the living? Are they destined to become the newest minion of the Forgotten Army? The wait for this one doesn't look too long yet in standby because it's towards the back of the park. That's a great pro tip. If you are coming to this event, start at the back of the park and work your way forward because the longer lines will be up at the front. We go into our first house. Okay, so this is a nightmare. Hi. Hello. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere. I don't want this. Nope. Game over! Ah! <laughs> oh! Okay! Oh, okay! I don't want to go! Ah! Oh, okay! Oh. That was a long house. That was a really long house. After each house, we'll be ranking it on a scare scale, which is how much we enjoyed the theming of the house, the scares of the house, and the overall production of each house. Uh, they weren't kidding about it being for mature audiences. That's true. You know, I have to say I'm pretty impressed by the quality of the house, the production value. I, having never been to this event before, I didn't know what to expect, and it was a very good house. What are you going to give it on the scare scale? I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10 on the scare scale. I do agree, the production made me pleasantly surprised. The theming was a little bit lost, but the scare actors were frequent and they did a really good job. I'm giving it a 7 on the scare scale. I'm leaving myself more room to be more scared, but I jumped and screamed quite a few times in that one. I like the vampire witchy theme. Let's keep going. Okay. Many of the most popular attractions do stay open during the event, so if you want to ride some of the roller coasters, you can do that. We're saving that until the end of the night if we have time, or maybe we need to come back and do a Bush Garden coaster video. I've never been here. I, I hear the coasters are good. Yeah, I'd do it. Look at this one. Is that that another is... drop zone? Oh my gosh, that oh. is stressful. Oh no. Aha. Uh -huh. Just standing there. Can you imagine how mad I would be if I'd gotten wet walking past a roller coaster? It wouldn't have been good. <laughs> we got a cocktail. It's in a bag. 
It's the Devil's Candy Sour Apple Cocktail. We only got one because we think it's going to be really sweet. It is very sweet, strong flavor of apple. There's some slight cinnamon notes in there as well. Um, I can't necessarily identify the alcohol, but I want to say it's likely vodka. I think it's just like that generic vodka mix malt beverage that you buy when you're in college. I can't say I recommend this one for flavor, but I can recommend it for theming. Glad we only got one to split. We're headed into our first scare zone of the night, Skeleton Crew. This one is pirate themed. There are several different scare zones around the park, some are universal. Hello. Is that a is that a leg? My dad's. Your dad's leg. Who <laughs> eats circus meat? Right for the slaughter. Oh, it's a leg. <laughs> we are not at Disney World. <laughs> you know what people love? What? Clowns. Yeah. Okay. What if I told you you can ride bumper cars with evil clowns? No. 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 It'll bound what? our souls together if I give you a name? Yes. How about Clarence? Clarence? Yeah. You sure about that? I'm sure. All right. Sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence is going to try and murder us. tried to murder us. Yep. Things are going great. It can only be up from here. Next house, the residence, home for the holidays. Finally, someone put a Christmas overlay on a haunted house. Yeah, surely not going to be a silent night. Merriment turns murderers at this suburban family home. Christmas arrives earlier than ever this year at the residence, and all new horrors are eager to be unwrapped. Holidays are best when spent with loved ones, but there's no guarantee you'll survive this silent night. <laughs> I do love Christmas. Yes! Oh my god! Okay. This is not Holly or Jolly. Yeah! Oh, look at dad. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Toolbox, nope. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Clark Griswold just happened. That was, that was surely not a silent night. That was my favorite haunted house, maybe ever? Really? Well, okay, it's hard to compete with IP houses at Universal, like Halloween or the previous Stranger Things house, but I loved it. I think their houses have very good production quality. I love the Christmas theme. It was very jarring to have like Christmas music, but murderers and they're eating humans and yeah, a heavy theme of cannibalism throughout. Santa farted. He did. He did do that. I'm going to give that an 8 on the scare scale. I really liked the theme. Their houses are really long. There's some good jumps in there. I really liked that one. Yeah, I'm also going to give this a, it's a higher score, a 7.5 on the scare scale. What got me the most was actually at the exit. The inside of the house was terrifying. But the exits, the, both of the houses we've done thus far, Incredibly scary. We're on our way to our next house and we're gonna go through three scare zones. We're going through the shortcut. They rose up into the night. Oh, in the dark. Yes, they did. They did. Ah! Oh, it's Handmaid's Tale up in here. I'm of Allen. What's your name? Voodoo. <laughs> and Beyond the Veil. <laughs> okay. Where'd you go? 
there are quite a few scare zones here and I really liked that last one because it was all black lit. There are also free roaming scare actors at this event which is something different than Halloween Horror Nights. If you do not want to be messed with by the free roaming scare actors you can buy a $15 light up necklace that will tell them to leave you alone. However, the necklace does not work in the houses or in the distinguished scare zones. So you're on your own there. Our third house of the night, Stranglewood Estate. This house is brand new this year. Let's go. Every town has its share of ghost stories, and this one is no different. Once a lively home filled with laughter and lavish parties is now filled with darkness and the spirit of evil. Welcome to the Stranglewood Estate. Yes, Oh, oh goody. What? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Are the ghost people or not? I don't think they're people. I'm gonna give this one a nine. I think the theme was beautiful. The scare actors were A plus. Just if you want to do this house, like, it, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. There's a reason this one's had the longest wait so far. Oh my god. You need a drink. Yes. Next on the docket, we are gonna see the show Fiends. There are several shows at the event, but this is the most popular. It is an adult show. It says all over the place, 17 and up. It's a raunchy horror comedy show, and I'm very excited. Because of its popularity, we decided to upgrade to the VIP package, which is where you pay $20 for reserved seating and a drink at the private bar. They offer beer, wine, as well as the event signature cocktails, which includes that nice syringe shot, as well as the blood bag full of that nice apple cocktail. Certainly you don't have to get the VIP experience. You can arrive at the show about 30 to 45 minutes in advance and grab a seat at the back. Yeah, but for $20, I got a $12 pumpkin beer I was gonna buy anyway. Plus we saved $3 by booking our tickets on Undercover Taurus. So basically this whole thing was $5. That's like a that's like giving money away. I don't think that's how math works. <laughs> After famous movies, uh, first course in soup, soup. Second course when Harry met salad. Ooh, I'll have a cheese honey. The entree is Jurassic Park. No thanks, I'm Jewish. And for dessert, Life of Pi. Uh, you know, we are not at Disney World. No. No, we are not. Now, that show was very funny, lots of topical pop culture references, but that show was sexy. Yeah. Risque. A little raunchy. Yeah, so uh, take that 
parental guidance warning seriously. Uh, but if you are an adult, it's very funny. I quite enjoyed myself. And uh, more houses? More houses. Yeah. We're headed into our fourth house of the night, Witch of the Woods. It has an hour long wait. I gotta say, I'm very glad we splurged for the front of the line pass. A lot of the houses have had like an hour long wait. If you don't want to splurge for that, then I would recommend either coming on a Thursday or a Sunday because the crowds will be a little bit less. I definitely think you could get all the houses done since there's only five in a night. However, we wanted to see the show. We wanted to do scare zones, try some food. So it's nice to not have to like worry about getting all the houses done. Oh my God. Uh, okay. We're, we're still in the queue. Are we? I don't know. It's the woods. I don't love the woods. Bad things happen in the woods. Something wicked this way haunts. An ominous legend summons you with her inescapable curse. Curiosity has brought many travelers into this dark forest, but only bone-chilling stories and dying screams make their way out. Get out of your soul! No! Oh, God! Second time, hello! Right here! Oh, Jesus, right. Okay! It's good! Okay, we survived. We survived that one. <laughs> well, I spoke too soon, because they got us good at the end. The exits of these houses uh, are incredible. That's not anything against the actual house itself. It's just like they continue to carry on the yeah, scare zone. you think zone. you're safe. You are not. not. That said, that was my least favorite one so far. I felt like there was long gaps in between the scares. Uh, the theme wasn't as fun to me. I'm gonna put that at a six on the screen scale. I tend to echo your thoughts there a little bit. It was a five for me. There were a lot of very long gaps where you were walking through individual hallways or around corners where there could be a scare and there wasn't one. Yeah. So it felt like it didn't have the continuity that others had. Um, still beautifully built. Nothing against that. It was just some long gaps between scares. One more house, a few more scare zones, maybe another snack? Yes, to all of the above. Yeah. Fine, it's a dog. Oh, uh, yep, yep. Did you see that guy? Yeah. Was he on Team X Plays? He had to be on Team X Plays. He was definitely on Team X Plays. 100% Wow, a celebrity sighting. Is that what Val did? That was Val. <laughs> that was Val. Wow. Who to thunk it? Wow. What's it called? Death Water Bayou. You say that. No, what's that's the whole thing. We're headed into our final house of the evening, Death Water Bayou, Blood Moon, the final phase. Hey, good job. I nailed it. But also I feel like that's just a lot of words put together. You're right. It's a lot of words, but let's do it. What's it about, Alan? The werewolves are clawing their way back in, and the blood moon is in its final phase. But we're all who enter the inescapable fate of the Death Water Bayou. One thing I want to give Bush Gardens props for is they space people out a lot, so you can't really see where the screams are coming from. At Universal, you pretty much are following in a straight line, so you can see people in front of you get scared. Oh, I, I, hello. I have the turtle soup inside. Uh, I don't know that I will. I have a problem with this. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, you get lots of life's personalized attention, which is a good or a bad. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, nice. She's nice. Look oh. good. Am I falling over? I feel like I'm falling. Ah! <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's part of the rock. Part of the rock. Oh, oh, they're just in the tree. Oh! This way seems good. Ah! I don't like that. shortest but also so good hey you know what sometimes werewolf things can be overused 
they did a really good job here because they put it in a swamp. And a swamp is objectively frightening. I hate love those spinny rooms where you feel like you're going to fall over. I like that they use like a mechanical werewolf as well as like a, a performer werewolf. I screamed probably the loudest in that one because one werewolf got so close to my face. What do you put it on the scare scale? Um, for me, this is an eight. I think it was so well done. It was, for as short as it was, it packed in a lot of scares. There wasn't a lot of downtime, so you didn't ever really get to recover. And the, it was just, well, beautifully done. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit higher. I'm gonna give it like an eight two. Um, this one, I really like the theme. It's my second favorite theme of the night behind the Christmas one. And I think I screamed louder than anything else. We really want nachos, but in order to get there, we have to walk through the final two scare zones. In the shadows. And Raven's Mill. We made it to our nachos. These are smokehouse barbecue nachos. They've got house-made tortilla chips loaded with brisket, pulled pork, a smoky cheese sauce, spiced pickled onions, jalapenos, chipotle barbecue, and a lime crema. That was definitely worth walking into scare zones again. In one of the scare zones, we were with teenagers. Nothing scarier than that. I mean, we've all been there, though. I was not that annoying as a teenager. I do think this is where Busch Gardens struggles the most, is their food and beverage offerings, especially when you compare it to Disney or Universal. There's just not that much unique stuff. A lot of it is churros and popcorn and standard theme park fare. These are basically ballpark nachos with meat put on top. They were good at first, but as we got down lower, the chips were not holding up. Most of them were really soggy. So I don't think I'd get these again unless I was really hungry. Yeah, I mean, the meat is passable, right? I think it's okay for theme park fair in this instance, but yeah, most of what we've seen is pretty lackluster. But for Bush Gardens, we know what we're here for. We're here for the thrills. A hot tip though with any of these events, make sure you eat your main dinner before the event actually starts. You don't want to waste time that you could be in line at one of the houses or doing a show or a scare zone eating a full meal. So eat beforehand and then stick to snacks during the events. Well, that's all for our first night of the Halloween challenge and our first visit to Bush Gardens Tampa for Hallow Scream. I really was impressed by this event. I think for the price, it's a really fun Halloween event. I thought the houses were impressive. The production value is great. And it certainly was scarier at times than Halloween Horror Nights. My favorite house tonight was the Christmas one. I just loved that theme. I thought it was so great. What about you? I love Stranglewood Estates. I think it was just such a well-themed house. It was huge with a lot of scares throughout that entire big space. Uh, it was just excellent in my opinion. I also loved the Beyond the Veil scare zone. That one was incredible because it had a nice fantasy theme and it was compact but it had a lot going on. I like that one too especially because of the black light but I also need to give a special shout out to Team X-Blades at the junkyard. Yeah. I, it's nice to know what Val's doing hey. ever since he challenged Team Puppets up. Honestly this is a win for Val's story. I agree. Well that's it for night one. We'll see you tomorrow for Halloween Horror Nights in night two. Boo! It's us for night two of the Mammoth Halloween Challenge. Tonight we are at Universal's Halloween Horror Nights and I've not been this year before. I have and it's awesome. There's going to be snacks, there's going to be scares and Michael Myers is waiting. Let's get to it. Good! Taters! Halloween Horror Nights is celebrating its 31st year this year. This is one of the best, if not the best, Halloween event in the country. It kicked off on September 2nd. It runs through Halloween night on select nights. Tickets on Undercover Tourist start at $68. Ours were $78 because we're here on a weekend. And we saved over $11 a ticket, which equals snack money, IMO. Halloween Horror Nights features 10 incredible houses, five spooky scare zones, two shows, tons of snacks. I cannot wait. I absolutely love this event. We arrived early today and we have accessed one of the stay and scream areas. These are special areas of the park that are blocked off for guests that are coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Now to access these various areas, you either need to have a day ticket, like a day ticket to the park or an annual pass, or for $35, you can purchase a stay and scream pass um, on Universal's website it will give you access to the park at 4 p.m. and then you can come into these areas and the reason we're doing this is because we want early access to the Halloween house as it's been the most popular
popular house all year. We don't have Express Pass for tonight, and we don't want to wait 90 minutes to see Michael Myers. One thing that's nice is that in the Stay and Scream areas, they do have some of the food kiosks open or restaurants, so you can grab yourself a beer or a snack or something to enjoy while you're waiting to get in the houses. And we have grabbed the Pizza Skull, which is a pepperoni pizza hot pocket, essentially, but in the shape of a skull. How are we going to cut this when we don't have a table? Just going to go in. Okay. Honestly. Can you do it without? Hold on. Here. Teamwork makes the dream work. Two hours later. <laughs> I like it. So normally when you have this marinara sauce in the base of a dish in a theme park, I worry that it's going to be a little bit canned and acidic, but this is not that, so I'm pleasantly surprised that way. It's also very cheesy, which you know I like, and while I do think pizza fries are the superior pizza-related snack at Halloween Horror Nights, I really enjoy this. It's a good hearty snack while we're waiting. While the event doesn't officially start until 6.30, they are granting early access into some of the houses beforehand if you are in that Stay and Scream area. We again got in the line for Halloween, which is opening the earliest at 5.15. We're almost there. It's almost time to see Michael. The event doesn't even officially start for almost an hour, and we're almost in the first most popular house of the night, so highly recommend Stay and Scream, especially if you're not doing Express Pass. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Are you ready? Yes. Come face to face with Michael Myers and go back to where it all began. Step into terrifying moments from the 1978 horror classic, Halloween. There's so many, there's like kind of, oh my god. Yeah. Ah. That's cool. Yeah. Ah. I mean, that's, that is one way to kick it off. What do you give Halloween on the scare scale? I give it an 8.5. Incredible production. There were a lot of scares that were because of illusions that I wasn't expecting. And I think that is a really push it up. I, you know what? Revise. 8.7. Wow. I'm going 9.2. I gave it a 9 when I first came to Horror Nights, but... I forgot how good that house was. It was very scary to come in from day to night because your eyes weren't yes. adjusted yet. So it was even scarier if possible. And the last time I went through it, I was busy filming. And this time I was somehow more scared because I wasn't worried about getting content. I was just walking through the <laughs> you night. You were in there. it. You were in it. Because we are in the stay and scream, we're able to jump in lines for other houses in this area. We did try and leave this area to go back towards the weekend and we were not able to, so keep that in mind. You're going to have to pick if you want to start at Halloween or start at the weekend. The good news is though, there's several other houses in this area. There's Fiesta de Chupacabras, there's Spirits of the Coven, and Dead Man's Pier, which is amazing, all in this area. So we're going to go queue up for Dead Man's Pier. We've been in line for 13 minutes. Spooky. And it's time to go to Dead Man's Pier. In a New England fishing village, undead fishermen emerge from the waves to seek their revenge. They'll reel you in and drag you under. was yesterday. This blows every bit of production out of the water. That house is so unbelievable. It's beautiful. I get scared because I'm like taking in the awe and the beauty of the house. And then it just pops and out then, from there, yeah, right? Yeah, like there's a boat and a lighthouse in the mist. It got me good a few times. I'm going to give this one a nine. I'll be going the same. It's a nine from me. Uh, the production alone puts this at the top of any house. Yeah, that one in Halloween. Chef's kiss. Hey, Alan. Yes, Molly. The weekend called. He's inviting us to a party. Well, we gotta go. Well, by the time we got all the way across the park, the wait had jumped to 60 minutes, and you know what that means. Beers. Halloween beers. I got the Bat Squash IPA. And in a shocking twist of events, I got a pumpkin beer. Yeah. Who could have predicted this? It's time when I plug the best deal at Halloween Horror Nights. That's the refillable mug. It's a 20 ounce light up mug and you save, you can refill it throughout the night with beer, wine, and the pre-made Halloween cocktails and you save, plus you get a bigger pour. How can you not? 46 minutes later and it's time to party with the weekend. Enter the macabre mind of the weekend in this haunted house as he stalks you through the surreal nightmare of his after hours music. Where do I go? <laughs> So dark. <laughs> Did you have fun at the weekend's party? 
You know, it was a little, little gory, but yeah. A little murdery. Yeah, murder vibes. You know, I've been in all these houses before, and that one ranked as number two when I first came, but I think I'm bumping into number three. I'm going to give it an 8.8. Eight. Still very high, but I'm just consistently impressed by Dead Man, so it's got to take the silver. It gets an 8 from me, an 8 even. It was very reliant on sort of strobe effects and mirrors, which is good, but they were just in mass. I think it was saved by the last room with just a series of uh, the weekends coming out in different strobe effects. I think that was such a really classy use of the effect, and it was very, very good. I will say I love the music. I love the vibe that you're in a party. It puts you in a comforting mood, and you should not feel comfortable. Yeah, you shouldn't feel that at all. It's about 7.45 now. The event's really rocking and rolling. The house waits are a little bit long, so we thought it was time for a snack. Can't go to HSN without a Twisted Tater. I got the fiery Twisted Tater, which is covered in queso, flame and hot Cheeto dust, and some of the ghost pepper sprinkle. I got a classic Twisted Tater, and what I did was a little secret menu item. You can get two flavorings on it. So I got both the sour cream and chive and the ghost pepper seasoning on here. A classic, a must-have at this event. I really like adding the ghost pepper for a little extra heat. Sour cream and onion is always a great bet, but I had this one at the last time I was here, and I do think I like the queso on it better. Yeah, the queso on it is actually great. It does not make the potato soggy, which is nice, and the flaming hot cheetos and ghost pepper make it just spicy enough to counter the queso. Just a very, very good treat. A must-have. Got it. We are also trying the maggot-covered cheese dog, which is a Korean-style corn dog rolled in puffed rice topped with gochugang drizzle and some black sesame seeds. I'm personally pretty excited. How are you feeling about it there? I like cheese, I like rice, I hate hot dogs. So positive, go. yeah? Well, I'm glad you're here to eat it if I hate it. Y'all, it tastes like a hot dog. It is a hot dog. I was hoping it didn't taste like one. It's not for me because I don't like hot dogs. But I will tell you that there are a lot of textures happening. So if you are a very texturally sensitive person, you might want to avoid this. However, great corn dog coating over the hot sweet and light coated in crispy rice with textural element. Gochugang sauce. Gochugang. Gochugang sauce. Gochugang sauce. Minted chili. Very, very good. I do not recommend. I do. The house lines are all really long. Uh, what do you want to do? I have an idea. <laughs> That was nice. Right? Yeah. It's one of my little moments at Halloween Horror Nights. I love to get a fresh pumpkin beer and come into Diagon Alley. There's nothing particularly Halloween Horror Nights in here, but it is open. The dragon looks amazing at night. You can get a butter beer. You can pop in the shops. It's a nice place to hide from some of the crowds. You can ride Escape from Ring Out till about midnight each night uh, and get some magic while you're at Halloween Horror Nights. We would like to get a treat now, but we have to go through two scare zones. They are Conjure the Dark. Sweet Revenge. I love you, giant baby! We snagged two more snacks to try. The first one here is Petrified Rat Tails, which are funnel cake fries with a crab dip and some scallions over the top. One of my favorites. I'm very excited to eat them again. And this is, I'm finally excited to try the Major Sweets ice cream sandwich. This is sweet corn ice cream in between candy corn shaped sugar cookies. So it is very clearly a sugar cookie exterior. It is very dense though, so it's going to be a very thick sugar cookie and it has to be to stand up to the ice cream of the truck. I'm obsessed with these cookies. There's definitely almond extract in there, which is what my family makes their Christmas sugar cookies with, so it's very nostalgic for me. Honestly, the corn ice cream is good. It's fine. It's not too sweet, but I'd be happy with just these cookies. I will say the corn ice cream does have a subtle taste of corn. It is present, so you have to enjoy that, but it's actually sweet, so it, it's a really good ice cream pairing. Yeah, this is a very good Halloween dessert. Next up, the rat tails. Yeah. Okay, so what are your thoughts? I'm obsessed with this. This is 
my favorite pick last time I did a video here, except for of course classics like Twisted Taters. It's basically crab rangoon innards on top of funnel cake fries. It's like a sweet, salty, savory combo and I'm here for it. I agree. It is very sweet. The fries themselves taste heavily of funnel cake. So if you don't like funnel cake, steer clear. My preference, while I understand the sweet and sea salty, briny flavor, I wish it was on actual french fries, if I'm being honest. Grow and spread Halloween! <laughs> Yay! Made our way through the horrors of Halloween scare zone, said hello to the pumpkin lord. He got to. You must say hello to him. It'd be rude if you didn't. It's his event, really. Absolutely. Do you feel like he's kind of grinchy? He does have some Grinch tendencies. He's Grinch-esque. It's really what's off-putting is the long fingers. The thingies. Mm. I get it. Uh, but we made our way through that scare zone, said hello to the Pumpkin Lord, and now we're headed into Hellblock Horror. This isn't a must-do house by far. However, the lines are all still pretty long, and we're just killing time so that the more popular houses have their wait times drop. So why not? This has been about half the posted wait time, but it's time to go into Hellblock Horror. Enter a prison whose savage inmates are monstrous creatures. If they break free from their cells, it's a death sentence for everyone. <laughs> okay. Hellblock Horror. You know, I'm, get, I'm knocking it low again. It was my least favorite last time I was here. I'm giving it a six. It had a few good jumps. There's a few very dark parts which scared me, but the monsters are kind of silly looking, and I didn't really love the theme. I give this a 5.8. It was more fantastical, but not in a way that is actually scary. It's not rooted in anything real. So it's, I can look at the scares, and while the, the jump scare might frighten me, it doesn't hold. But Production value is pretty good, so still a 5A. Almost inside Spirits of the Coven. This is another one that had a short wait. We're waiting for the popular waits to die down, so here we go, witches. A coven of flapper witches will lure you into their 1920 speakeasy and turn you into a witch's broom. They'll be cackling, you'll be screaming. It's rude. <laughs> It was okay. Yep. The theme, I bought into the theme. I'm gonna give it a six on the scare scale. I bought into the theme, but it wasn't nearly scary enough and it didn't feel like there was a lot of continuity throughout the house. I'm also gonna give it a six, actually. I like the theme a lot more than Hellblock Horror. I'm very into the witches stealing men's souls. I'm very into the flappers, 20s era, but I didn't scream hardly at all, which is rare for me in a house. I feel like a bunch of scare actors were missing this run through, so it's a fine house, but nothing you should prioritize. We noticed the nearby Fiesta de Chupacabras only had a 35 minute wait, so we jumped in line here. One cool thing about this house is that it is only spoken in Spanish and all of the scare actors are Latinx, so we love that. I remember this one being very cool production wise, but not super scary, but let's see how it plays out tonight. Visit a Latin American village where the legend of the Chupacabra lives on, and the streets are lined with the blood of tourists like you. Fiesta de Chupacabras, I'm putting it at a 7 on the scare scale. I really like the theming, the production quality is great. I love the kind of like animatronic puppet Chupacabra. I just don't think that house is that scary. I'm going to give it a 7 too. I just think that it's a good story. I enjoy like the cultural relevance of the Chupacabra. I like how the entire uh, house is built. So. Yeah, it's a 7 to go Not necessarily scary, but just a fun house to visit. Are you ready to go see the black phone? No! What? 
It's your deal. I'm, a, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm, a, I'm afraid. It's not a secret. I don't like it. I'm afraid. I don't want to go. I would rather not. Frankly, if I had my way, we wouldn't do it. So we're going to do it. The horrors of Blumhouse House actually takes two of the most recent Blumhouse movies and shoves them together in one epic haunted house. Freaky, which is kind of like a horror comedy with Vince Vaughn, and then The Black Phone, which is a horror horror film with Ethan Hawke. And I'm not kidding y'all, I think I screamed the loudest in this house of any on opening night. So I'm excited to go back. No. No. Why? It's rooted in real stuff. So is Halloween. Not like that. Halloween is a machine. He's a tank who does the murder. Yeah. These two properties, at least the second one of the Black Phone, is a terrifying kidnapper. Yeah. Are you actually scared? Yeah. I didn't think we. I didn't think we'd get this scared. It's out. not an act. I don't want to go. I thought you were kidding. I literally thought you were kidding this whole time when you said you didn't want to do Black Phone. I'm gonna. I thought you were just no. like. No. I'll do it for the content, but I hate it. Oh yeah, we're definitely doing it now. The only thing I hate about this house is that it's in the Fast and the Furious building, and it means that I'm walking into this building and not riding Fast and the Furious, because I'm the only person on this planet that likes that ride. Alan is stressed. Enter the worlds of two horror masterpieces from Blumhouse as you face the most terrifying moments of Freaky and the Black Phone. Oh, no. oh my god, this one is terrifying. I hate it. Have to put you with the others. You good? No. I think that's the scariest house. I hate it. I think that mask is so scary. I think the jump scares are really well placed there. It's really dark in there. I think that's a very well done house, especially if you've seen those movies. If you haven't seen those movies, then it's just like any other house. The IP means nothing to you. For me, I'm going to give that an 8. 7.4 for me. Listen, this house is frightening because if you've seen it, it is rooted in very real stuff, uh, and the jump scares are incredibly well timed, and that mask, specifically for the black phone, is just incredibly frightening. I've never heard you yell that. That's mine. <clears throat> I've lost my voice. We are headed to the back of the park where the final couple of houses remain, but in order to get there, we have to pass through the final two scare zones. They are. Graveyard, Deadly Unrest. Oh! Hello! Hi. And Scarecrow, Cursed Soil. Hello. Oh! Hi! Next up, we saw the wait time had dropped significantly for Universal Monsters Legends Collide. This is that epic battle between the mummy, the wolfman, and Dracula for the amulet. Alan, who do you think is going to win? My well, money's on wolfman. My money's also on wolfman. Can I change my money? Dracula. You don't want to have the same money as me? No, nope. we got to diversify our equity. You're about to get caught in the middle of an epic battle between the wolfman, Dracula, and the mummy. Together for the first time ever. <laughs> Legends Collide. I give it a 7-6. It's not the scariest house by far, but it's fun to see those original classic monsters, and it's fun to see who wins each night. I give it a 7-5. It's just such a unique plot. The setting is kind of ubiquitous. It doesn't matter if it's a mummy, if it's a vampire, if it's a werewolf. And I'm just here for who wins, honestly. And tonight, it was my pick. Deep in the subway below an abandoned, toxic New York City, mutated humans fight to survive. But the deeper you go, the darker your fate. Is this like a 
it's a real New York subway. Feels like we're really in the subway. Woo! How did you feel about that? For all three people who know what I'm talking about, that house reminds me of art aberration. And I rate that at a 7.2 on the scare scale. The entire vibe of underground mushrooms, jump scares around every corner, bioluminescence. I'm not one of those three people that get that reference, but what I will tell you is we are walking into that house so late at night, we were like the only people in there, which made the scares so much scarier. Uh, so that run through was probably like a seven, eight, but overall the theming of that one is definitely lower on my list. Probably more like a seven, four. We have one house left. Walking into our final house, Bugs, eaten alive. Alan, are you excited for Bugs? You know, what I've learned from it's tough to be a bug. Oh, sure. Is that they are essential members of our ecosystem. Yeah. So this is really an ode to Bugs. I'm gonna let you put a pin in that and we'll talk when we get out of the house. Okay. You may feel differently. <laughs> While touring a 1950s home of the future, you'll be swarmed by hordes of revolting insects as they worm your way into your deepest fear. Pollinators. <laughs> We're pollinators. You feel the same way you did walk into that if bug man? If you like best to yeah, that house is a nightmare if you don't like bugs. I'm going to put it at like a 7.5. I think it's at the top of the second half of the houses. I love the 50s theme, and it really is scary if you don't like bugs. Let me give it a 6.9. It reminds me a lot of Fallout, if instead of nuclear waste, it was bugs. You didn't like it? It was just a big cockroach devouring a person that really got to me. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap on night two of the Mammoth Challenge here at Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. I love this event. I think this event is incredible. I think the production value of these houses is amazing. We got through all 10 of them thanks to getting here early for Stan Scream and staying very late. We had some great snacks as well, saw all the scare zones. I can't say enough good things about this event. I think that Halloween Horror Nights is just probably the best overall value for your fun there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of fright, but it's just a good time overall. Plus, the food is probably the best you're going to get at any of these events. So, I just don't have enough good things to say about this event. Um, obviously, if you don't like being frightened, maybe not for you, but the production value is just incredible. This one's a winner for sure. It's going to be tough to beat, but we've had two very scary events, and now it's time to have something not so scary. So A magical palate cleanser. <laughs> See you at the Magic Kingdom? Yes. Hey, Brain. What up, Xenon? We are here at the Magic Kingdom for Vicky's Not So Scary Halloween Party as the third part of the Mammoth Halloween Challenge. We've had two nights of scary fun, so I think... It's time for some silly spookiness. I agree. There are treats, there's a parade, there's fireworks. I hear the Sanderson sisters are here. Wait a minute. They're here? They're here. Oh, yeah. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party kicked off in August after a three year hiatus. The party returned in full force. The party is from seven until midnight. However, with your specialty ticket, you can get into the park starting at 4 p.m. We once again bought our tickets through our friends at Undercover Tourists. They were $141 each after taxes and fees, which saved us about $8 a ticket from Disney's prices. This is a mid-tier cost as it gets more expensive the closer you get to Halloween, with Halloween night typically being the most expensive of all. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is sold out for the entire season at this point. The tickets go really early. However, you can already save on Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party tickets with Undercover Tourist. Those are selling quickly as well. And spoiler alert, we've already bought our tickets for some more fun videos. As Alan said, the other two events we've been to have definitely been geared towards mature audiences and those that want some spook in their Halloween season. But Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is all about fun and family entertainment. The Boo to You Parade is my favorite parade that Disney ever does. There's a Hocus Pocus stage show. There's fireworks, tons of characters. You can go trick-or-treating around the Magic Kingdom. It is a lot of fun and a great way to close out this Halloween challenge. If you come into the park starting at 4 for the event, you will get wristbanded, which Alan is hiding in his cool wrist brace in case he falls down on his blades later. However, if you were a day guest at Magic Kingdom prior to the party, you don't have to leave and come back in. You can get your wristband as well as your trick or treat bag at checkpoints throughout the park. The one I went to in my first not so scary video was in Tomorrowland where Stitch's Great Escape used to be. 
they're routing us through this walkway on the side of Main Street since it's what the we in the biz called crossover right now. Oh, We're getting candy right. already. Thank you. A Snickers brownie. A Snickers brownie? Is that new? It's probably new. Probably new. Disney's really flaunting that Mars partnership these days. I recommend getting to the park before four. That way you can take advantage of the all-day Halloween snacks, getting some attraction cues, as well as getting some of your lines for your favorite meet and greets that actually open. And we've lost Molly. We've... What's going on? When the party first started, they didn't have the Mickey pumpkins. They only had the Cinderella pumpkins. It's really Halloween now. <laughs> We're taking our own advice and trying some of the all-day Halloween snacks before the party officially begins. We're at the Cheshire Cafe in Fantasyland by the Teacups. This is the Binks Cattail. It's a Halloween version of the classic Cheshire Cattail, which is essentially just a chocolate croissant, but with fun decoration. Of course, it's got Binks from Hocus Pocus. And then for scientific purposes only, we have to retry the Witch's Cold Brew that I tried the first night just to make sure it's still good. I would hate to have recommended a product that wasn't good, so for you, I'm drinking this pumpkin coffee. It's not because I want it. Cheers. It's for you. I'm happy to report it's still delicious. Can confirm. You know I don't like too sweet of drinks. It's the foam that's pumpkin, but then it's an iced black coffee down there, so the foam kind of drizzles in nicely and adds just a hint of pumpkin and a little bit of nuttiness in there as well. Ugh, amazing. Get in there. Is it hard with your wrist guards? You know what? They do impede movement. Mm. A nice buttery croissant with a dark chocolate sauce, so it's not super sweet. It's just a very balanced snack. And as a reminder, this is not part of the Not So Scary exclusive treat, so this coffee, that croissant, a beautiful breakfast. Oh, game changer. I'm a genius. We're here at Pirates of the Caribbean. They're letting us into the queue a little bit early, and there are actual live pirates in the queue during the Halloween party. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Daniel. Oh, you're here for me, Jailbreak. Yeah, I'll help you. You told me something was going to come. I... Did, you, did you bring the gunpowder? What do you got? Yeah, I'll, I'll come around back. This is one of the spookified attractions. The other attractions are Space Mountain, where it's pitch black with a spooky soundtrack. There are jokes at Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor that are Halloween themed, and they light up Mad Tea Party with a Halloween twist during the event. Plus, all of the mansion maids and butlers at Haunted Mansion get a spooky ghost makeover for the party. It's Captain Jack Sparrow we're after. Send him in, Sir Davy Jones. It's the rum they want. <laughs> and there they are. These are our mates. Right These are the ones. Ahoy there! Ahoy! Ahoy. Ah, there you are. We're looking for a uh, crew to help us find my treasure. What do you say? Yes. Who's the captain? I. Who's the captain of your me. The captain. Throw them over. Throw them over. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have the spellbinding fried pie. It is stuffed with butts, buffalo chicken, mozzarella, and blue cheese, and wrapped in some nice flaky dough. And as a bonus, it looks like brook. Hi, cheers. Cheers. They're full hot. So that is fantastic. It tastes like they took a very good buffalo chicken dip and put it inside of a flaky pastry, like a Pop Tart or maybe even like a toaster strudel. Just very, very good texture and consistency. That was my favorite snack I had the first time I came, and I'm glad it's still delicious. Also, gotta shout out that jalapeno cilantro aioli on top. It's phenomenal. If you're looking for a savory snack or even a light meal, delish. I have to say, despite the little sprinkling that's happening thanks to the upcoming hurricane, they're doing a good job keeping the party going. They had the country bears undercover, and we met them. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you, Wendell? And liver lips, <laughs> Zeke, and Big Al, all of you guys are here. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> Can we take a photo with you guys? <laughs> and they also moved the Cadaver Dance undercover, which is the spooky version of the Dapper Dance. We're headed 
back down Main Street to try and go see everyone's favorite mouse, Mickey. Because honestly, it would be really rude if we came to his Halloween party and didn't say hello. Oh, we have to visit Mickey. A requirement. Absolutely. Hi, Mickey. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Those are all our friends. They're in there. <laughs> Very small, right? How did they fit in there? Magic, you know. You know how it works. <laughs> Can we take a picture with you, Mickey? We wanted to say thank you for inviting us to your party. We're having a lot of fun. <laughs> we just met Mickey, and now we are on our way to see the Hocus Pocus stage show. Very excited. Now, normally I recommend seeing the later entertainment, seeing the second parade, seeing the later Hocus Pocus shows. However, with the inclement weather, we don't want to take any chances and we're hoping the shows still happen. Plus, because of the weather, there's like no one here right now. <laughs> yeah! Well, we saw the abridged version, which is better than nothing. So now we are headed to the front of Main Street to see if we can see Max Goof as Powerline. We were waiting by the train station to hopefully see the parade as well as the pre-parade, which includes the Headless Horseman riding, as well as Max Goof dressed as Powerline. He kicks off the parade if you are on the Main Street half of the route. Unfortunately, because of the weather and the slippery streets, neither the horse or Max Goof could come out and they did an abridged version, a rainy day cavalcade version of Mickey's Beauty You Parade. Hi Mickey! Hi Donald! Hi Gooby! Clarabelle, I love you! It was very, very cute. It was something fun because neither of us have seen that before. But, you know, of course the full parade is better. We decided to get a little bit of a snack before fireworks. And I don't know what you're thinking. It's corn! But actually it is an almond sweet corn cake, which is almond vanilla cake drizzled with icing and topped with candy corn. I'm excited about this. Oh yeah, corn wouldn't cut that easy. Look at that. It's cake. It is still so off-putting to look at it as it looks like a corn on the cob. Cut your little knees. Oh, thank you. And one for you. Corn cake tears. Mm. Right off the bat, not super sweet. You can tell it, it is sweetened, but it's not sickly like you'll get in a lot of places. I like it, because I like cake more than cupcakes or frosting. I like the cake part. And since this is just a really nice almond cake, plus I love candy corn, this is a really fun dessert. It hits. After our delicious fake corn on the cob, it's which <laughs> I do want to point out that Pecos was serving their regular menu, as is Casey's and I believe Cosmic Rays as well. So if you do want actual food during the event, you can get it. But 
like I said before, a pro tip is to eat beforehand so you don't waste party time eating dinner. It's still spitting quite a bit. It's getting a little heavier, but we're headed back to Main Street now to see about fireworks. We have made it to our spot for Disney's Not So Spooky Spectacular, which is the fireworks show every evening that takes place once at 10, 15 p.m. <laughs> Good evening, Trek and Treaters. We are so terribly excited for you to join us tonight as we celebrate the thrills and chills of this season. Be sure to keep your eyes open, or you never know what may happen on Halloween. Playful tricks, playful tricks. Well, anything can happen on Halloween, as some friends found out on a night much like this one. did go off as scheduled. The bad news is the very cool Jack Skellington puppet that comes out on stage was not able to make an appearance. But here's what he looks like from the last time I was at the party. My friends, with a lot of adventure and a bit of fright, Halloween is the greatest of nights. Happy Halloween! <laughs> I said this last time and I just gotta say it again. I don't love that fireworks show. They were okay, although I think I was spoiled by things like Aloysius in the past, and yeah. that's just incredible. Of course, anytime you watch fireworks in the Magic Kingdom, they're wonderful. They're perimeter fireworks, so they go a little bit further around. There's projections on the castle with Mickey and the gang. I just don't want to hear Mary Poppins and princess music. I want to hear villains music. I agree. I do miss a lot more of the villainous presence. Um, I think it was neat to see a fun take on those songs, but my heart of hearts miss the villains. True, but obviously you should see it. It's fireworks. For sure. We came back to the end of Main Street to hopefully catch Max or the full parade, but unfortunately the rain prevailed and they did another rainy day cavalcade. So please enjoy this footage of the Boo to You Parade from the first Halloween party. This is my favorite parade at Disney World all year long. I love the pirates, I love the grave diggers, I love all the villains. It really is an awesome parade and a true highlight of this party. Make sure you get lots of treats. Speed up, not so scary. Wait, not too many And even though we didn't get to see all the entertainment we wanted to, it was still a ton of fun. And if you want to see a Halloween party not during a hurricane, you can go watch my video I did on the first Not So Scary. It covers everything. But I really do love this event. I love the Booty You Parade. I think the theming is so fun. I love the spookified attractions. We had some good snacks, too. We had some great snacks. Plus, we hung out with the country band. Honestly, that makes any, any trip to Disney World, in my opinion. So. And Kudos to the cast members, even though it's been raining all night, they've been doing a great job of making sure everything that can happen is still happening, even if it's modified. Shout out to you guys. I'm sure it wasn't an easy night to be here. Yeah. Always glad to show some cast members some love, so thank you all. Yeah.
Well, that's it. We completed the Mammoth Halloween Challenge. Big thanks to our friends at Undercover Tours for sponsoring this challenge. If you are looking for tickets, definitely check them out. We saved money on each of our tickets that we were able to spend on snacks and treats. They are an authorized retailer of all kinds of tickets, Disney Universal, Busch Gardens, and beyond. A lot of their tickets have a 365-day return policy, a best price guarantee. It's a company that we have bought from multiple times personally before Mammoth Club even existed, so we were super happy to partner with them on this event. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the awards. First award is to Bush Gardens. To Bush Gardens Hallow Scream, we award the best value. I was surprised at how much fun we had at Bush Gardens. The production value of those houses were great. It was super, super scary and fun and at a really good ticket price. Next up is Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. We award you best entertainment. It's hard to compete with the Booty You Parade, the fireworks, the Hocus Pocus Spectacular, and I think it goes without saying that if you're looking for a family-friendly event, this is the one you want to do. You wanna go. I look forward to this event every year, and I'm so, so glad it's back. And last, but certainly not least, Halloween Horror Nights. To Universal, we award you Best Overall. <laughs> the production quality is amazing, especially in houses like Halloween at Dead Man's Pier. Absolutely incredible. Plus, we both agreed the best snacks were at Universal. <laughs> Twisted Taters. That's all you need to know. Yeah, those two words are truly magical. That's all it took to win. Twisted Taters. But truly, all of these Halloween events were so much fun. There are so many spooky, exciting things you can do around Orlando this time of year. Which one's your favorite? Definitely let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow us on all of our socials. Until next time, friends, it's been spooky and magical. Bye! Bye. Ready for Christmas? Oh, always. Always.